Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Tract and Truth Tuesday. That's the title. We give that title to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast, and you have hit our Tuesday broadcast. Welcome. Today, we are going to do what we typically do on our Tuesday broadcast. If you are a regular listener, you know that we are doing a verse-by-verse study through the book of 2 Peter, but on our Tuesday broadcast, we set the study aside and focus in on the whole idea of you and I who know Christ being more efficient, more heartfelt, more involved in telling the gospel, getting the gospel to people who have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, people who have not yet received Christ. And that's our goal today. To that end, I have my Bible open to the book of Galatians chapter 4, although today I will be mentioning a number of scriptures. I'll be reading or quoting uh, many of them as well. But if you can right now, get your Bible open to Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. And then also get something on which you can jot some notes and then also be ready to jot down our contact information. I want to give you a sample packet of some evangelism tools. They're called gospel tracks. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to give you a free sample packet, one each of all of our English gospel tracts. I'm going to highlight one here in just a moment, but here's a question for you. When you think about God, what comes to your mind first? To what comes to your mind first? Now, however you answer the question, it's okay. Your first response, my first response can be very, very different, and it's okay. For many people, their first thought would be something like this, that God is my Savior, God is my hope, God is my rock, God is my friend, God is the oh, lover of my soul, and so on. But now let me change my question. Here it is. What does God do? Or, put another way, what is God doing in our world today? And again, your first response may be different than mine. But eventually, friend, your list of what God does and mine, they would have to jive. They would have to match. Why? Very simple. The Bible is the only source you and I have to know about God and his work. Oh, yes, creation tells us three things. Creation, according to Romans chapter 1, tells us that, number one, God exists. Number two, that God is powerful. And number three, that God is God. But beyond that, we need God to reveal himself to us. And he does this through the word of God, the Bible. So what is God doing in our day? If we would begin to write out a list of the works of God, I hope your list would finally get to this one, that God is an evangelist. God is actively at work to see people saved from sin. Oh, my friend, if God is an evangelist, then we need to be like our heavenly father. Amen. If he's an evangelist, we better be evangelists too. Oh, before I get too far into the program today, I have a quick story about God being an evangelist that happened this morning at 6.30 at Dunkin' Donut of all places. It's going to be a good program. Please stay tuned. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago. I've got one of them in my hand. This one's entitled Peace in Terminal 
illness, peace and terminal illness. It was written by our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, who did die of cancer. And he wrote this track, Peace and Terminal Illness, because he had the peace of God, because he knew Christ as Savior, but he knew so many people that were facing the imminent death of their body because of cancer or some other disease. And those people did not have peace with God. There was not peace in their heart. In part of this track, he's quoting out of the book of Philippians, and he said this about the Apostle Paul. I'm quoting now. He, the Apostle Paul, also wrote, I am ready to be offered. What did he mean? Was he in a Rome, he was in a Roman prison and he knew he was about to be martyred and he said, I am ready. He did not say, I am terrified or frightened or worried. He said, I am ready, ready to die. How could he speak with such wonderful peace? The track goes on from there. If you're looking for a, just a quality piece of Christian literature that will explain the gospel clearly, will do it with tenderness, understanding that the person who is reading this is imminently facing the end of their life. This gospel track will lay out the gospel lovingly, simply, oh, it will tell them they're a sinner, but they can have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. It is one of those great tracks that we offer here. Please get it from us. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. You can also go to our website, which is www.bibletracksinc.org and give us your name and mailing address. Well, Galatians chapter four, verses four and five says this, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that are under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Before I go on with that verse here, let me tell you about what happened in Hollywood, Florida at 630 this morning. A friend of mine stopped at a Dunkin' Donut and he needed to ask directions. There was a 30-something man standing behind the counter and the man was originally from India. My friend got the directions he needed but then realized he had nothing to give that man which told the gospel. So my friend went to his car, came back with two tracks. The Indian man stared at the tracks and my friend in utter amazement. Then this Indian man told my friend that three days earlier he had purchased a Bible so he could read it to find out what it was all about. Now, said the Indian man, you come in and offer me this Bible materials. Oh, friend, that, beloved, is God at work in a man's heart. God is an evangelist. Today, I want to quickly share three basic facts about God being an evangelist. Some people like to use the word soul winner or witness. Whatever term works, I'm referring to all of them here. Three facts. Fact number one, jot it down. God's evangelism started before creation. God started being an evangelist before creation. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8 describes Jesus as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. The same truth is found in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. So evangelism has been forever stamped on the heart and character of God from eternity past. Fact number two, God's evangelism was displayed even in the Garden of Eden in the story there in Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis 3, Adam and Eve sinned, of course, against God. Their sin caused them to hide from God because of their guiltiness. But God went out seeking them. God came to the garden seeking this two lost people, lost in sin. Then God provided a way to deal with their sin. God was an evangelist there in the Garden of Eden. But this brings me to fact number three. God's evangelism was at its zenith when he sent his son. Did you hear that? I want to say it again. God's evangelism work was at its zenith when he sent his son. 
for years, these verses out of Galatians verses chapter 4, verses 4 and 5 have been favorites of mine. Again, they read like this. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that are under the law. Why? That we might receive the adoption of sons. We could have a relationship with God. But I can find this same truth in a number of places in the Word of God. For instance, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 11, you probably remember this story. Jesus says this, How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? Another one still in the Gospel of Matthew. This one, chapter 9, verse 13. Jesus said, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. One more verse, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. It says this, this is a faithful saying. You can depend upon this. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Let me return to my starting questions. When you think about God, what comes to your mind? But then, when you ponder what in the world is God doing in our world today, what comes to your mind? What do you think about? Does the fact that God is doing the work of seeking lost people, does that come to your mind? Does it come to my mind? Well, after reminding ourselves today that God is himself involved in evangelism, we dare not be shocked or surprised at all that he has called us to also follow in his footsteps and being involved in his gospel work. God deliberately went places to seek sinners, starting in the Garden of Eden. But do I do that? Oh, my friend, Do you know I work here at Bible Tracks? Frankly, I live my life kind of in a Christian bubble. I work at a Christian organization. All my workers here are believers. All my close friends are believers. For Mark Smith to meet a lost person, I must deliberately go someplace looking for them. Oh, yes. True, I I do meet lost people every day at the grocery store, Walmart, wherever, but am I consciously aware? Am I consciously connecting the fact that I am at those locations by the design of God for my life today? Am I meeting that person? Am I conscious that I'm meeting that person by God's design? Do I go out with an eye towards connecting my casual meetings with people and and the idea that that person needs the gospel of Jesus Christ? Depending on whose survey you read, the basic fact is this. The surveys say that only about three believers out of ten will ever, will ever give the gospel to a lost soul. That fact is sad, and more than likely, you and I are not going to change that number. But what can we do? Even though we can't change the three out of ten number, you and I can make sure we're one of the three, can't we? Today, I want to connect my life and the gospel that I know and love with a lost person because God loves them. God started loving me before the foundation of the world. I want to love others because that's what my father does and his nature is in me. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, 
The word Trax is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him 